Okay, today we are having fun with a 2009 CAS 3 Plus module that, believe it or not, the factory Ista P software fried the baby. Um, I've got power down on the floor here. So when we turn on power, which I just did, we get nothing. This thing is just deader than a doorknob. This is my simulator that we actually take to shows every once in a while and show how the system works on a BMW. We've got the OBD2 coming off. We've got a power cable going to it. We've got our AVDI hooked up. And when we open up the BMW cloud, hopefully it's going to connect. Ah, look at that. Okay. And you can hear it's binging and doing all that. But you notice it's, it's not finding this. No communication. Okay. So, and I'll just give you a synopsis of what we did. This is a used... Um, CAS 3 module, CAS 3 Plus, and this is the one from the car. I didn't feel like screwing up the one from the car again. So what I did is I took the data from the used one, and what we found out was the flash was messed up. ISTAP screwed up the flash. It also screwed up the EEPROM. So we're going to give you a quick show of what we did and then we'll go on from there. So if you have one that you have used ISTA P or hell, in that case, even if you have used AVDI and the thing won't communicate anymore, here's a couple of things you can do to fix this. Okay, so these are our CAS modules. Um, this is the cover. This is the one that came from the car. And if you notice, it has See how it says 9147227? That's pretty much what you're looking for. Um, the same. And I was actually lucky enough to get the, you know, hardware, coding, diag index, everything was the same on these. So once we did that, um, we hooked up. This is actually VVDI prog. And if you go to immobilizer, and you go to CAS 3 Plus um, and then get your chip and ours was an OL15Y do the connection diagram <coughs> great diagrams I might say so we have actually soldered ours soldered ours on and then we hook up the VVDI and if you're wondering why mine's upside down it's because when I got done soldering the cable actually worked better that way um, so what we're going to do is you read the EEPROM and the flash from the new used one and then what you're going to do is you're going to take the flash from the new used one and you're going to write it and I'll show you what I did on that okay so we've got our cas3 plus we've got it on the bench we've got it soldered on we're hooked up to the vvdi and yes it doesn't matter if it's upside down um the only reason i did this is because when i soldered on the cable it laid better that way so we are going to go over here to our computer we've got our program running we've got our right chip selected so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up we're gonna go down here to the CAS 3 the used replacement flash and we're gonna open it okay so now we're gonna write and what we're doing is we're writing the flash file from the new used replacement to 
the old one that was in the car. And, and I'm probably wrong when I say this, but the flash file on this is somewhat similar to an operating system. It tells the module what to do, and the EEPROM is all the specific data. Kind of like putting in your passwords and all of that. So we're gonna let this go because it takes pretty much forever. And once it's done, then we'll show you how to do the EEPROM. Okay, we're getting close to the end. Okay, so it's done writing the flash. And yeah, that took about 10, 15 minutes. Not really, but okay. So then we're gonna switch over to EEPROM and we're gonna open up the EEPROM See if I can do this one finger. Okay, now the EEPROM. Go down into the EEPROM. Actually go way down almost to the bottom. And what you're going to see so it should be there it is. How about that? I got right just about there. Okay. If you look here, where, oh shit. See where it says 0F90? See how this says David 2 Apple Apple 55? Five. On this bin, when I read it from the CAS, that was something else. It was weird. So you have to change it to D2A55. Five, five. Now, if you're wondering, Hey Tim, how in the heck did you figure that out? Are you some sort of rocket scientist? No, YouTube is your friend. The internet is your friend too. Um, basically, there is a guy, if you type in Kaz Fix, you will find Shimmick Beck Best. Um, and I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but the guy's a genius. He really is a rocket scientist. And he figured out that 0F90, as long as you change those first six bits, everything is okay. At least you'll be able to talk to it. And we'll show you that later on. So what I'm gonna do now is, this is the original EEPROM from the original fried module. And when I say fried, it's not so much that it was fried, it's just that the flash and the EEPROM, the software was corrupt. So now we're gonna write this. And you'll see this one, the EEPROM. Ah, oh, real quick. <laughs> Done. Okay. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take our CAS module back to the simulator and the Abritus software. And we're going to see if we can program it with Abritus. Okay. So now we are back at the simulator. We've got our CAS hooked up. We've got the power turned on. And when we put a key on, you still don't see anything. Hit the button. Nothing is happening. So, now we're going to go over. We're going to select BMW. Detecting protocol. It really isn't doing anything. Go to 3 Series. We're looking at an E90. What we're hoping for, see how it says KWP CAN 100, reading vehicle details? It really isn't going to read anything. The big thing that we want to do, we want to be able to, we're going to go to programming. Aha, there we go. See how it says 40 CAS 3? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to click on it. And see how this comes up? 9147227. We're going to click on program. Okay, we've got our voltage. Now, we're going to hold on the start button. And we're going to let this baby go. So we're going to let this go through all the programming. It takes... Okay. It will take a few minutes and it'll it'll you'll see it where it'll say oh 400 and entering programming so what's going to happen is
when it goes to where it starts kicking off the racing flash. So now it's going to erase the flash and it's going to reprogram it. Okay, see how it says eight minutes uploading. So when that's done or when it gets close to it, we'll kick back on. Okay, so we're just about done. Look at that. Finished programming. So now what it's doing, checking signature, doing all of that good stuff. So we're going to let this puppy go. Okay, it's enabling checking DTC success and now all of a sudden we got lights on the cluster okay and it says here it says click next but I've never been able to get that to work so basically I just click back okay back so now watch this we're back at the beginning We might have to turn it off, turn it back on, but I guess we'll see. Wow, look at that. All our data, well, I'm not going to say all our data is there, but we've got the VIN, what it is, and all of that. Um, when we go to CAS module, it's going to give us all the data that it wasn't doing before. Fault codes, and yeah, we got a K-line fault okay but the one thing that I did notice when when you go to keys and start I don't know if it's just because of my simulator or what but if I put a key see how the key shows that it's not programmed to this and I think the reason is is because um, I mean, if you go down here and we do it again, keys and start synchronization, see how it shows no key in the ignition. What's funny though, this will make you laugh or cry, whatever you want to do. So now I'm going to take the key, I'm going to put it in the old antenna, and then when I click on CAS 3, it says put a key in the antenna see how it says no key but then all of a sudden it says found th key three <sighs> we're gonna go back to the car and we're gonna put this in and we're gonna make it work but you know just just a quick heads up hey you know we took a CAS module that was basically dead and we were able to at least bring it back to life. Now we can go put it in the car. You know, and just so you know, nine times out of 10, it's not a hardware issue. It's usually a, uh, it's usually a software issue. Good luck. Hope you guys uh, have the same luck I did on this one. This, <laughs> and just so you know, this wasn't something that took 15 minutes. This took me a week or two to figure out. So, hey, good luck to you. Any suggestions or questions, throw them down there in the comments, and we'll see you on the next one.